اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم وزد وانعم عبد فقير الى الله يعني بعد كلام الدكتور علي نتمنى ان نرتقي الى ما قال ونكون على قدر الوصف الذي الذي هو وصف بشكل او 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 باخر this is the outline of of my presentations um, uh, in, in a very simple in a very simple definition it's not like and like in and research and, and it's not like in, in literature it's it's a, like a connecting the dots it's like a 10 year of experience dealing with the quality uh, starting from the uh, laboratory quality management uh, iso 9001 and غيرها من الاشياء till moving Uh, to the very blessing area, which is education. And, and then it was a very, very, very nice experience out there. If, if you can see here, this is, this is the knowledge. And then if you got your experience, you can connect the dots in, in a nice way. Then you can do sign a kind of creativity. When you have a knowledge with experience, with an open mindset and an and ability to learn, then you go, you go for that. Before I start, just I would like to, tend to send in a grateful message and a thanks for message uh, for being here today. Um, and it's, it's very, very in, in the duration and the years and since the places. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Slimo, Slimo leaderships, deans and teams for accommodating and, and a kind hospitality uh, in the last six months. And it went like, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and a special thanks went to Professor Senosi uh, because he made some kind of change and, and even uh, the commitment Uh, toward being in Sudan, and, and he just an easy way he convinced me to be a part of a, such a nice institution. I think, firstly, because of himself. Uh, I'm very happy and pleasant to be a part of, of this. Then, and this experience in medical education conference, it, it's get me connected uh, with someone, someone different, is Professor Adil Tawati. And I think it was a very nice experience for me to deal with someone like Dr. Adel. Uh, I cannot say more than that. The organizing committee, Dr. Salma and the rest of the team, including Badr, yeah, they did a marvelous job to, to accommodate and to have a successful event. Then I moved to, let's say, Sudanese uh, uh, speakers. They're not just speakers. You, you, you can see and you can and, and you will you will know how they 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 are passionate toward education and they are eager to make an, a positive change, not just in Sudan, all over the world. You, you can see Dr. Adil with us today, Dr. Omar, Dr. Hassan, and soon inshallah you're going to have Sahel. And even you can see Muhammad Taha, he's doing a great job in, in the Imru as well as Muhammad Hassan Abdullah from, they're not, they're, they're, they're literally crossing the borders. And, and I'm very proud to say that in the literature, in health professions education in the region, you're going to find and a quite number of educationalists and health profession educationalists leading from Prof. Bashir Hamad till the, 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 the other generations and uh, Prof. Samar Seyfoul and, and others, Samaj Johar and many others, uh, especially Dr. Ali al -Gallai. Before Before this session, he, he just met Dr. Adil and he make me like in a corner, me and he, he's, he, he's accepting the invitation to be with us uh, because really uh, Dr. Ali, yani for us in Sudan, he did a great job in teaching and making the training for surgeons in laparoscopic surgery in different level, basic, intermediate, advanced, and even they start the master class on their behalf. Thank you very much. From here, we, we are going to go connecting the dots, seeing what's, what's going to be in, in the last 10 years. Uh, starting from the point of the word curricula and the students and the last uh, presentation of Sarah, And she, she bring the, the diagram of admission till, till the outcome. I'm, I'm going just to have you in a journey uh, regarding the process and, and the outcome together. Uh, 
and how and how we are going to make use of and such comments and, 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 and interventions. So if you have to do it, you can do it. 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 You I would like just to start with the quality culture. It's not the quality or what's a segregation. So what is the quality culture first? This is the first question we should, we should ask. Well, not just go dive in accreditation and what's quality assurance, no. How can we come up with an equality culture in our institutions? We are Muslims. Yes, I, I think this is, this is our culture and this is the quality culture at glance. So when you would like to come up with a quality culture, you need to define your processes and you need to enhance your qualities according to the outcome you're looking to get there. So if we can emphasize that in this, in this diagram here you can find, in the, in the left side you can find the structure and management part of your institution, of your university, of your any part of institutions you're working then. Then you need to link at what is the cultural and psychological part in, 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 in your organizations. In education, you need to come up with, with a design of curriculums. You need to say, to, to, to find the stakeholders analysis, to see what the community needs, and you need to address uh, the, the, the issues of social accountability, blah, 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 this stuff. Then what, what you are going to do at your institution to make this is an equality culture and, and, and practices? You need very simply to stimulate the dialogue and reflection among your stakeholders, faculty, development, community of practice, and invest in leadership. If you commit yourself for this, then definitely you're going to work for quality. Regarding any other part, accreditation, uh, WFME, yes, any other part, if you put this in mind, and you focus in the human factor, in your people, in a different range, the people who are working in the process, the stakeholders, the leadership, you invest in their skills, coming up with a community of practice in the area of quality of education, in the area of uh, laboratory, the area of a community of practice to come up with the best practices available and adopt it and adapt. Say you can, you can come up with other definitions of quality, yes? And firstly, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to commit myself to the quality. And, you, and then you go and go to the literature, go back to the other presentation, and you'll find a many, many others definition for the quality. But let's focus on this one. Transformation. When we're talking quality, we're looking forward to transform to the better version of ourselves, better version of our institution, better versions of other things. Say this, let's say it frankly, the best definition for the quality, you can, you can choose number one, number five, and then you can do the best of your life. There is many other definitions for quality assurance and, and being mentored and mentioned by others. What's quality in education? Because we're educationalists. We would like to guarantee confidence and standards, educational, blah, blah, blah. Just would like to come up with an, a good outcome. Yes, that's it. With a maintained system. So in higher education, they add another one word, maintained and improved. They're talking about improvement. So just maintaining it's not going to be insufficient. So why improving every now and then? The needs of the community is being changed. So the specification of graduates is being changed. Your processes, your teams, your faculty, every now and then you need to improve what's, what's going on in your, in, your in your educational institute. So we can come up with many other definitions, but. Let's go to the third one. Quality as a transforming force in relation to the vision of the word uh, worded in students, to the teacher con uh, conceptions and, and their role and to the institute, institution culture. So it's about the institutional culture. What, what, what are you looking for? You're looking for good outcome? Yes, okay. So you can go back 
and improve your work using many, many other tools. For example, you can use this in a quality assurance cycle, setting your standard and defined your expectations. I'm, I'm going to use community-based education system. I'm going to uh, consider the social accountability. I'm going to use uh, the best practice available. Uh, okay, this is, how are you going to measure that? Uh, I'm going to measure according to the way I put the standard. Say, when you did the measure, judge, are you okay? Okay, okay, keep going. If there is anything, you need just to, to fix. The fixing, you need to improve, you need to improve your work there. Okay? Here an, an, an example for the London Postgraduate Medical Education Dinary. Um, they're talking about the quality cycle in a quite different way. As, as we mentioned, they assess the educational needs, they design the robust curricula, and then they gather feedback from learner stakeholders. They use this feedback and modify programs, learnings, teaching, assessment approach, and then they do again the recycle. And here you can see the true cycle of, of the quality assurance, including every part of, of your work. So it's touch the institution, then it's go back to the department level, then it's go to the, the course specification, the objectives, blah, 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 and others, and even the module level in, in your. So the, our basic dimensions, there are five dimensions, learners, environment, content, processes, and outcomes. And you can come, come inside each one and you can define how, how you are going to improve, how you are going to assess, how you are going to evaluate, and how we are going to put in the other. Other example here, the quality improvement framework, it's been mentioned by uh, Dr. Muhammad, I think, when, when he, he talked about the competency-based education and the frameworks, uh, a GMC model, or for uh, tomorrow's doctor he talked about. Here you can, you can see the different part of the framework. But in the green area you can see, they talk about sharing the evidence, in inspections, visiting, and checking. So from here you can, we, we can, you can see the importance of the accreditation, okay? So what is accreditation? For me, it's a process that helps you to continuously improve yourself, <laughs> okay? Doing continuous assessment, evaluation, and implementing. So it's not a punishment? No, it's not a punishment, it's not a target, it's not a goal, okay? So in accreditation, you are doing self-evaluation, self-improvement, and every now and then you rely on your evaluation and your improvement, and you need to judge the effectiveness of academic units, again, as a set of defined standards. So the accrediting agents helped me by finding, by defining a set of standards I can use not, not for, for the punishment. Here we come up to the WFME and, and the fights all over the world to get the WFME accreditation. Simply, WFME started the accreditation just to ensure the patient safety. In the start, they're talking about the accreditation to ensure the patient safety, including the, the all other stories being mentioned and, and the points being raised by Dr. Umar in professionalism, Muhammad Taha in social account, uh, Abdullah in social accountability, the, the new trends and in inclusion in Muhammad Hassan Taha, mm -hmm. progress testing re re regarding the assessment, <laughs> uh, the, the different competency framework mentioned by Sarah. So every single process, you, you just to ensure the safety of your, patient. of your patients. So safety of your community, public, and here, this is an, 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 an one of milestones of my career life. It's been in Korea, 2019 in WFME conference. I have been invited as invited speaker, and it was a very pleasure opportunity to meet Sarah uh, and the other quality experts. And, and here you can see Professor Gordon, and he's a WFME president, and he's going to be retired uh, next December. And really, he did a marvelous job to, to assure implementing the system. And here you can see William uh, Peniski. He's the ACFMG president. And from here, just I would like to come up with, 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 a, with, a, with a note. 2024, yes, it's a part of motivation to getting WFME accreditation, but it's been stressed by ACFMG. And it was a very opportunity, it's a very good opportunity to, to let the other people enhancing getting their 
their accreditation then it was a very nice uh, alignment and, and consensus with WFME and, and ACFMG of, of, of transforming the work. Just here I would like to reflect on, on recognition status and, and, and I wish there was a member of Merkaz uh, al just would like to differentiate with the recognition status for the accrediting agency and the accreditation for the medical schools. They are two different parts. WFME is going to recognize, as you, you see the letter uh, in the doctoral representation, recognize the institution to accredit the other medical schools, so uh, either locally or, or regionally. So if there is any benefits from getting WFME recognition for our creating agency, yes, there is. It's in a global mark of recognition, learning, uh, driving up using the standards, and best practices going to be provided by engaging with others, improving uh, improvement from the recommendation of the assessors that visit your institution and visit uh, some kind, uh, some number of universities while they are doing their recognitions. And for our students' eligibility <laughs> for doing their USMLEs, they will not be eligible 2024 if you are not accredited by a recognized institution. So that's why we are eager because the students, they have the rights to, to make their informed choice. If they would like to, to, to go to US, yes, it is right. My, my role as a university, my role as a government institute, my uh, role as uh, the quality and accreditation center, I need to provide this as opportunity for them. The role of accreditation has been presented by, by Sarah very well. I'm, I'm not going to go through, just and, and would like to link between quality and accreditation. If there is a link, or just we are looking forward to have accreditation. If there is, huh? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. In the literature, there is, there is many many evidence of of uh, importance of having independent accreditation process. It's encouraging the innovations. It's helping you identifying your weaknesses and strengths, as as it's been mentioned in the report of accreditation, accreditation and then suitability for registration and licensure, licensures and many others. So accreditation become increasingly important because it improve the education improve the healthcare service, expansion of training sites, and this is the, our experience in Sudan. If, if you can remember the first the slide, there was a golden stamp, it was an accreditation symbol of being accredited training for the postgraduate uh, medical programs in, in Sudan. So lastly, they enable students to make their informed, informed choice. So within accreditation, yes, there is an underpinning principles, public safety, Transparency, accountability, participation, consensus building, ethics and professionalism, quality improvement, synergy between training and service delivery. And this being mentioned by Dr. <coughs> Mohammed Hassan, assess what, what, what community needs. And, 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 and we're very, very honored to be in Tobruk and, uh, and Umar Al Mukhtar University to, about, to talk about faculty development and to talk about curriculum reform to, uh, to, to, to meet the, the need of, of the health system at the pre-conference workshop. Ho here you can see the difference between the old mindset of accreditation and the new way of accreditation. It's an evolving, encourage innovations, emphasize consultations, peer expert uh, inspection, focus in the curricular content, and, and, and it's very clear in changing the the standard WFV from the last version to the to the new version. And I think one of the nice statements mentioned by Professor Jeanette Grant, no one size fit all in this curriculum and this accreditation. Every special content, continent, country, uh, proficiency, they need to tailor their own standards and need according to their to, the, to, to their situation. Here is the link. We're looking forward to having a quality management system. We need an overall quality governance for, for, our, for our system. So accreditation just is going to be a milestone. You can, you can take it while you're, you're, you're doing your quality work, while you're, you're, you're living your quality culture experience, because it helps you in the process of continuous improvement, customer satisfaction, error reduction, and you can have your comprehensive quality management system and comprehensive cultural approach in, 
in, in, in, in your institution. And here is a kind of comparing quality assurance and con uh, quality improvement regarding the, the accreditation. And at le uh, finally, this is a, a very nice uh, slide being mentioned by Sarah. Here, just I would like to emphasize in the next presentation, uh, in the next slides, please look, look, look at these circles. The first one, it's a pre-admission education. And this is steps before getting into medical school. And the last circle is the health outcomes. What is the impact of your graduates at, at your, at your, at, at, at the level of, of the community? So here using the accreditation cycle, and unfortunately it's been messed, here this, the first step is assessing the readiness. When you're assessing your readiness, you need to use an quality improvement tools. We're going to see in the next slide. Then preparing for accreditation, you are going to go in a hectic work, preparing your documents, blah, 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 and other evidences. And you need to write and rewrite and to find up your alignment with the standards and measures. And you need to come up with the documentation at this point raised by Dr. Adi. In the third part of the cycle, the opportunity for improvement. Huh? While you're doing your accreditation, you're going to identify that the area that needs to be improved. Then reporting. And here you can, you can align the, more, the importance of the documentation and the importance of, of the holistic quality management system you, you need to work on in a building. Reaccreditation, it's, it's a very, very nice point because you, you're, 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 you're not going to be relaxed. Oh, I got the accreditation. No. It's going to, to put you in another challenge that you are going to, to need to raise the standards. So using the quality tools throughout the acquisition life cycle help you on organizing, assessing, improving, and improving your performance to meet and achieving the standards and measures. So what the kind of tools that I need to know while I'm doing my, my accreditation journey? You need to use a BDCA cycle, and it's a most important tool in the quality management. Then gun charts, flow charts, cause and effect or fishbone diagram. And this is tool is very important tool for us as educators. We need to know the root of each problem because we're talking about the research mindset, talking about the evidence. We need to get to get things. Here we go for the take home messages. Just remember that you need to to adapt and adopt the quality assurance cycle every now and then. And the quality assurance system and you need to remember that accreditation does not guarantee success. It's an only step along your quality, your quality journey. Accreditation sustain improvement in a quality organization and performance, and this is a, one of the most important uh, take him talk take him messages. And here, the journey of thousand smile begin with one single step. And I think if we can come up with one recommendation after after this conference, it's about what Professor Sassi talked about the faculty, faculty enhancement and developing the capacities of the others. And regarding the, the point of capacity development here, I would just I would like to thank uh, Professor Bashir Hamad, Professor Sheikh Mahjoub, and, and the other team members. We, we were in batch one in Health Professional Education Sudan Medical Specialization Board. And I think this is what the transformative program. After this program, we had, I think, two other master programs established by uh, this team in other different universities. This program work in changing the mindset regarding the education, regarding the quality of education, regarding the understanding of, of the curricula and other things. Thank you very much.